So let's look at this chronology. 400,000 years after inflation ended in the Big Bang, we have the universe becoming less opaque and we can now see from that because the rate the, the expansion occurred, we had cooling. Then it took 100 million years to get our first object to, to have gravity, because it's very weak, but graphs continuously work 100 million years. Now, from that first object, how long did it take to have the first star? Because you needed a critical mass so that it would implode on itself and you'd have enough uh, 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 heat and pressure to cause a, uh, a fusion reactions uh, right. among hydrogen to create the thermonuclear activity. That process was very quick, about okay. a million years. Oh, so very quick. Very quick. After you condense gas to a cloud, uh, you start making the stars based on numerical simulations that people have done. Okay, so once you have the, the, the object forming, then gravity becomes is very, is already very powerful, so it can work much more much quickly. Much more quickly. Okay. And uh, you may ask, uh, which part of the story have we imaged already? So we have a photo album of the universe. We have an image of the universe 400,000 years after the Big Bang. That's when the primordial radiation that was left over from the Big Bang, was able to stream freely through the universe. It's called the Cosmic Microwave Background, right. discovered back in the 60s. So we have a snapshot of how the universe looked like at that time. And then we, using the most powerful telescopes that we have right now, we were able to image galaxies all the way back to when the universe was a billion years old. Okay. But there are some missing pages okay. in this photo album of the universe. And that's the... That's where the, that's the frontier of observational cosmology. Basically now. between a, a hundred million years after the Big Bang to a billion years, that's where we want, that's when this fa the, the, the stars first alit. That's correct. And we haven't yet imaged the universe in this interval of time. What, what do you expect that to look like? Would there be individual stars that haven't yet formed galaxies or would they, galaxies already have, have formed in that context? The very first objects had probably one star based on numerical simulation. Yes. They were not really galaxies made of many stars. Yes. Each object made up one star. Mm -hmm. And the star was probably much more massive than the sun based on theoretical calculations. Uh, by what factor? About a hundred times the mass of the sun or okay. even more. Okay. So these were massive stars um, that were much brighter than the sun and short-lived. And the reason they were much more massive than the sun is because the gas was primordial, didn't have any heavy elements that we are made of. Right. So in fact, life as we know it is an afterthought in the universe. Life was not possible early on. We are made mainly of water, for example, and water, the water molecule contains oxygen in addition to hydrogen. Hydrogen was made up in the Big Bang. Oxygen was produced in the interiors of stars. So it was not available at those early times. And because these heavy elements like oxygen or carbon or iron were not available, the gas was not able to cool very effectively. So it made oh. these big clumps of, of gas that ended up in a massive star. And simulations show that. So these stars, a uh, hundred uh, uh, times the size of our sun, virtually all, all hydrogen, maybe some helium, collapsed quickly because uh, they couldn't cool and therefore they had a thermal nuclear reaction. But because they were so large, what, what was their lifetime? They must have had a short lifetime. Only a few million years. Few, that's very short. Very short. Now, I assume they collapsed into black holes because they were over the limit. No, in fact, there are two, um, depending on their mass, there are two uh, possible fates for these, these stars. One is uh, for them to make a black hole, as you say. That's if you uh, consider very high masses. Yes. But there is another possibility. If their mass is small enough, they can make up a supernova explosion. A very uh, simple type of a supernova explosion that was never observed because we haven't yet seen that such a star. Yes. Uh, and such a supernova explosion is essential in dispersing the heavy elements that were made. So if we are talking about our origins, where the first carbon or oxygen atoms were made, it was made, they were made in the interiors of these massive stars. Of those primordial massive stars that we don't see anymore. That's correct. Uh, but those are the ones that created the heavy elements that cause life to exist. The first heavy elements were made there. 
And once they were dispersed throughout space, there was a second generation of stars and a third generation of stars that used up the gas and had smaller masses because now the gas was able to fragment into smaller pieces. And these second generation stars resembled more closely stars like the sun. And eventually most of the heavy elements were made in these low mass stars. But the first generation of stars is responsible for starting this process. And in a way, studying them is like studying our origins. Where did we come from? So this is the scientific genesis. And you have a, a family album of the universe, but you're still missing pic some pictures on some of the early pages. That's correct. We have pictures that we simulated with uh, computer simulations. We would like to see what reality is like. Until we see it, we don't know whether our theoretical predictions are correct or not. I'm a theorist. I, I'm responsible for some of these predictions. But I realize that uh, reality is the ultimate uh, <laughs> judge as to whether we understand what is going on.